Hi everybody. Today we discuss tryptophan metabolism. Tryptophan. Tryptophan is a aromatic amino acid, essential amino acid, aromatic amino acid, essential amino acid, aromatic amino acid contains an indol ring. Indol ring contains an indol ring. And chemically, it is known as alpha amino beta indole propionic acid. So, the thing which we have to remember here is it is an essential amino acid, an aromatic amino acid, and contains an indole ring. Chemically, it is a propionic acid which is an indole ring and an amino group. So, propionic acid, indole ring, amino group. So, name is alpha amino beta indole propionic acid. Now, an essential amino acid which is both glucogenic and ketogenic as I have already told you that aromatic amino acids mostly are both glucogenic and ketogenic amino acids okay now the importance of tryptophan tryptophan goes through three two cycles that is the one cycle is kinaurinin kinaurinin pathway that will form NAD, NADP and the second is serotonin pathway so that will form the first pathway is kinaurinin the second pathway is serotonin it will form serotonin melatonin and it can also lead to the production of 5 hydroxy indol acetic acid so the important points in this to remember is tryptophan is an essential amino aromatic amino acid containing an indol ring both glucogenic as well as ketogenic tryptophan takes part in two cycles that is kinaurinin and serotonin pathway kinaurinin will help in formation of nad nadp and serotonin will help in formation of serotonin melatonin and 5 hydroxy indol acetic acid so this is the basic chemistry that points that we are supposed to know important points in MCQ and important points while writing the answer also now as we have seen tryptophan is an essential amino acid and it is forming the most important thing that is NAD that is required for our various metabolisms now coming to the synthesis of or the metabolism of tryptophan so tryptophan in short it is written as try or it is also called as w so tryptophan try w and now coming to the metabolism tryptophan when it reacts because now we are dealing with kinaurinin pathway we will form kinaurinins so tryptophan will form n formyl kinaurinin n formyl kinaurinin because it is a kinaurinin pathway so first we will form n formyl kinaurinin and then we will form kinaurinin it is easy to remember the metabolism if you know the cycle which we are name of the cycle so this is kinaurinin the full name is kinaurinin anthranolite anthranolite pathway so you know that you have to form kinaurinin first and then you have to form anthranolate. So kinaurinin anthranolate pathway. So tryptophan will form N formal kinaurinin, N formal kinaurinin will form kinaurinin. This kinaurinin will form 3 hydroxy kinaurinin. And this 3 hydroxy kinaurinin finally forms the one which we require 3 hydroxy anthranolate. Don't get afraid of the name of the uh, products that are being formed or the intermediates. Just remember the name of the pathway. Tryptophan goes into kinaurinin and anthranolate pathway. So tryptophan will form N formal kinaurinin, then it will form kinaurinin, form 3 hydroxy kinaurinin, and finally form 3 hydroxy anthranolate. Okay. Now coming to the enzymes. So tryptophan in the presence of tryptophan pyrolase. Tryptophan in the presence of tryptophan pyrolase it will require oxygen will form n formyl kinaurinin this because we do not require the formyl part now only the kinaurinin part so the next enzyme will be formidase 
so the form uh, so the formid is formid will be removed so formid is removed h2o takes in and formid is removed by formid is so kind of urine is formed now because we are adding a hydroxy group we require an enzyme which is hydroxylase so it is kinaurinin kinaurinin hydroxylase okay so it is a hydroxylase enzyme so forms three hydroxy kinaurinin now we do not want kinaurinin we form iron trinitrate so the next enzyme is kinaurinase so kinaurinase alanine is removed and finally three hydroxy anthrenate is formed in this whole uh, cycle nadph is required over here nadph and oxygen it forms water and nadp okay so this happens three hydroxy kinaurinate and three hydroxy anthrenate is formed now the most important part in this whole cycle is that 3 hydroxy kinaurinin requires plp requires plp pyridoxal phosphate pyridoxal phosphate okay that is pyridoxin plp is required vitamin b6 now suppose somebody has deficient in vitamin b6 so 3 hydroxy anthrenate will not be formed and it will lead to the production of xanthourinate xanthourinate or xanthourinate yeah it is excreted in urine so if somebody is having deficiency of pyridoxal phosphate that is pyridoxin so it forms xanthourinate it is excreted in urine so you can say that if you want to measure the important point of view here is if you want to measure the whether if you want to if you measure the xanthourinate in urine in urine you can analyze whether vitamin b6 deficiency is present or not is present or not or not okay so this is the importance but that is the formation of xanthourinate in this cycle so tryptophan Name the now remember the name of the cycle kinaurinin anthrenyl pathway tryptophan forms n formal kinaurinin in the presence of tryptophan pyrolase then it forms kinaurinin in the presence of formidase formate is removed because we want a three hydroxy kinaurinin the enzyme is hydroxylase kinaurinin hydroxylase it will utilize nadph this three hydroxy kinaurinin forms three hydroxy anthrenylate in the presence of kinaurinase and an important vitamin pyridoxal phosphate If pyridoxal phosphate is not there, this kind of urine forms xanthourinate and is excreted in the urine. The important point here is that if you give a tryptophan dose, a more tryptophan dose, and if you measure the excretion of xanthourinate in urine, you will, uh, you can analyze whether there is vitamin B6 deficiency present or not. So the cycle till here is clear. Tryptophan forms N formal kinaurin, N formal kinaurin forms kinaurin, and kinaurin forms three hydroxy kinaurin, and this forms three hydroxy anthrenate. And now it goes through various small, various reactions. Many reactions are there. It will go through those reactions, and finally it will form NAD and NADP plus. NAD, NADP plus. it forms in the intermediate formed is 2 amino 3 carboxy muconate semi aldehyde and then forms quinololate and then forms nad nadp but if you write this reaction and then you given uh, always a dotted arrow means there are uh, there are four there are approximately minimum four steps that are present and it leads to the formation of nad nadp so the dotted arrow means there are various intermediates that are being formed and final product is nad nadp okay so this is the first pathway of tryptophan which leads to the formation of nad nadp just remember the name of the pathway and you can write the whole cycle and the important point is the production of xanthourinate if vitamin b6 or pyridoxal phosphate is absent now coming to the second pathway of tryptophan that is important again which will lead to the production of serotonin now we know that we have to form serotonin and the same cycle will form melatonin also so just go uh, just remember 
there is a tryptophan we already have this tryptophan now undergoes a reaction to form 5 hydroxy tryptophan 5 hydroxy tryptophan why this if you remember if you just remember that serotonin is also chemically known as 5 hydroxy tryptamine just remember this that serotonin is 5 hydroxy tryptamine the cycle becomes more easy to write so tryptophan will form 5 hydroxy tryptophan a tryptophan because we want a 5 hydroxy tryptamine okay so this 5 hydroxy tryptophan will form 5 hydroxy tryptamine tryptamine which is called as serotonin okay so this is the serotonin okay so now this is a hydroxylation reaction so we require a hydroxylase so we have tryptophan hydroxylase over here tryptophan hydroxylase and this will lead uh, this requires an oxygen and whenever there is hydroxylase in this amino acid metabolisms it requires a tetrahydro bioptin especially in amino acid metabolism whenever there is a hydroxylase enzyme it requires tetrahydrobioptyrin which forms dihydrobioptyrin so this reaction is done just remember that serotonin is 5 hydroxy tryptamine and because you want a hydroxy group so you hydroxylase tryptophan by tryptophan hydroxylase enzyme it forms 5 hydroxy tryptophan this will form an amine now 5 hydroxy tryptophan will form 5 hydroxy tryptamine so you require a removal of carbon dioxide to form this amine and because it's a removal of carbon dioxide the enzyme is decarboxylase okay the enzyme is decarboxylase now we have formed serotonin now serotonin will form serotonin will form n acetyl serotonin n acetyl serotonin n acetyl serotonin and this n acetyl serotonin will form melatonin the enzyme for n acetyl serotonin is because it is an acetylation reaction the enzyme required is n acetylase enzyme required is n acetylase and because M, then n acetyl serotonin forms methyl melatonin and as we have already discussed that it is a methylation reaction so sam will take part and it will form s adenosyl homocysteine in the presence of n acetyl serotonin n acetyl serotonin methyl transferase n acetyl serotonin methyl transferase because it is a melatonin this 5 hydroxy tryptamine can also this 5 hydroxy tryptamine can form 5 hydroxy indol acetic acid indol acetic acid in the presence of monoamine oxidase monoamine oxidase this 5 hydroxy tryptamine can form 5 hydroxy indol acetic in the presence of monoamine oxidase so the reaction if we summarize tryptophan form 5 hydroxy tryptophan it it forms it undergoes removal of carbon dioxide forms serotonin that is 5 hydroxy tryptamine then it forms n acetyl serotonin in the presence of n acetylase which requires an acetyl coa coa is removed and then it forms melatonin in the presence of methyl transferase and sam and sh takes part in the reaction 5 hydroxy indol acetic acid is formed if it if the serotonin undergoes a reaction through monoamine oxidase okay that's all for tryptophan metabolism thank you